This is just a quick unboxing and overview of the new Garmin Dash Cam Live. This is Garmin's first always connected dash cam. Always connected dash cams aren't new. In fact, Blackview has offered these for years, and in 2022, Nexar came out with their Nexar 1. At the same CES 2023 show, Garmin wasn't even the only manufacturer to announce an always connected dash cam. German company Bosch announces their ride care camera, and Ring, who we know for home security systems, is releasing the car cam. Inside the Garmin box, you're going to find a 16 gigabyte micro SD card, a cigarette port style adapter with two USB ports, a long micro USB cable, and a short micro USB cable. They include two cables here because one of them is meant to snake all the way down your fuse box or your OBD USB adapter, which I'll show you in a bit. The shorter one is if you want to just drape it down across your windshield, down to your USB port. Of course, if you want to use always connected features, you're going to have to wire this down to your fuse box. Old school cigarette lighter adapters usually only provide power when the car is running, so keep that in mind if you want to use LTE features. So if you haven't purchased the dash cam yet, keep watching because I'm going to go over some of these options for powering the dash cam. Lastly, in the box you get another adhesive magnet mount. Use it as a spare or to install in a second vehicle. Alright, let's look at the dash cam itself. Uh, looks pretty similar to the dash cam 47, 57, and 67W. It's just a lot wider. So peeling off the plastics here, nice premium feel. Buttons on the right, peel the screen protector off. Hmm, okay, okay, magnet mount on top. You know, I'll just peel this off later. All right, let's plug it into power. All right, red LED status light on the bottom right. That's also the status indication for recording. All right, we're gonna go through setup really quick. Uh, it's not a touch screen, you gotta use the buttons on the right. All right, United States, American English, I am a Californian and that's my first language. Uh, let's just go through the menus here, camera placement, vehicle height, uh, and I do wanna record audio, that's not on by default, interestingly enough. All right, so far so good. So I'm fast forwarding here. Originally I wanted to do a complete overview of all the settings and features and the menus. Uh, you know, I realized that's not going to be too useful for you guys. Uh, you're going to have this dash cam just installed and running in your car. You're never going to really dive through these menus except for that first setup. But uh, the menus are super intuitive to use. The interface is super snappy and responsive. Overall, it's actually a big improvement from their older dash cam 47 and 57. So their Garmin Drive app is pretty cool. So this actually is one, a one-stop app for all of your Garmin automotive products. Uh, connecting is super fast. Um, I've owned other Garmin dash cam units and connecting them has been painful, such as, uh, you know, the dash cam mini too, but this one's super quick. So LTE features require a subscription starting at $9.99 uh, and that gives you LTE and seven days worth of video retention. The advanced plan, so that's $19.99, gives you LTE and 30 days of video retention. Now you can upload the footage via Wi-Fi, so if you're parking your car in front of your house, it can just upload the footage to the internet that way, but if you want that always connected, uh, peace of mind of being able to, uh, you know, see what's going on in front of your car uh, anywhere, um, you're going to want one of these subscriptions. You also get features such as theft alert and incident detection. So, for example, if someone drives your vehicle without your phone connected to the camera, uh, it's going to send you an alert through the Garmin Drive app or if an incident is detected, so the Garmin Dash Cam Live does that via motion detection, it's gonna send your phone an alert. You can also do location tracking, so if someone steals your vehicle, it's gonna give you the exact uh, coordinates. Um, you know, whether that's useful, uh, that's, uh, that remains to be seen. I feel like if someone broke into your car, they're gonna see this dash cam recording the entire thing and they're just gonna rip it off your windshield. So these features are kind of more gimmicky than anything, but I'll let you be the judge of that. I mean, yeah. This is the Garmin Constant Power Cable. It's the recommended solution to power your dash cam live. So just taking a look in the box here, you get an OBD2 to USB adapter. You get a little manual and a little adhesive sticky set here. 
This is used to mount the USB side of the adapter to wherever makes sense to you. You can probably stick it inside of your foot wall somewhere. And the long cable I showed you earlier plugs in right into that USB port. There's a shutoff timer switch on the front allowing the adapter to provide power for either 10 minutes, 24 hours, or infinitely or indefinitely. There is also a 11.7 volt cutoff built into the adapter so if your car battery dips below that voltage the entire adapter just stops powering your dash cam. This is Garmin's other constant power solution, the parking mode cable. This is significantly trickier to install than the OBD adapter I just showed you. So. You get your USB adapter, uh, you get a spade terminal for the ground wire, but you're going to want to figure out how to cook up the battery and the ignition switch power into your fuse box. Uh, this is really going to depend on the vehicle, and if your vehicle does not have screw terminals, you're going to have to purchase an add -a fuse kit. These generic card wire kits usually come with an add -a fuse. This is a dash cam power adapter from Dongar Technologies. So this plugs into your auto dimming rear view mirror and provides USB power. This is not compatible with all vehicles, so see their site if you're curious. So uh, I have a spare auto dimming mirror here that I'm that I set up with external power for demonstration purposes. So you unplug the mirror, you plug the adapter in, you plug that adapter back into the vehicle, <coughs> and you now have a powered USB port. So you can take your dash cam live, plug that into the USB port, and that thing will power right up. Uh, please note that this specific adapter is not always on, so you actually can't use the LTE features, but it's there if uh, you have something like the Dashcam Mini 2, which is a perfectly super discreet setup, um, and the Dashcam I've been running for years now. Another option from Dongar Technologies is their two-prong universal dash cam power adapter. So this is basically a USB adapter with two prongs that are fi friction fit into the back of a rear view mirror connector. The difference here between the last one is that if you can locate the constant on pins in your rear view mirror harness, that will allow you to use its constant power to run the dash cam live. So I'm basically just taking the two prongs. I already know which two wires are constant on and ground for this particular mirror. Uh, so those are friction fit. You probably want to zip tie that a little more securely. And I'm just going to plug the dash cam live in. Um, all right, so as you can see, that thing is receiving power and it turns right on. So this is a great option uh, if you uh, have a connector on the back of your rear view mirror. Hopping over to my Honda Clarity, the OBD port is in the driver's side footwell. The Garmin adapter plugs right in. You really can't mess this up. It only goes in one way. Uh, immediately, you get a red light indicating power. Plug the longer USB cable that comes with the dash cam live and tuck away any excess to secure the adapter. You don't want it to get in the way when you drive. Route the remainder of the USB cable up to the dash cam. You can either push it in between the gaps and cracks or you can remove interior panels. It's really up to you. I'm going to keep my dash cam mini 2 running just so I can get some footage and compare both of them for a future video. Here I am installing it with the Dungar Technologies power adapter. So this is ignition switched and it's going to turn the uh, dash cam mini 2 on when I start my car. This video is getting a little long so I'm going to leave the real comparison and review for a later video. But this is footage from the dash cam mini 2. And here's footage from the dash cam live. So is it worth three times the price of the dash cam mini 2? In terms of image quality, honestly, no. But it does everything it's advertised to do. I'll save more thoughts for that future video. If you made it this far, thanks for watching.